In this video I will show you in an experiment how you can determine the internal resistance of a battery. I will explain how you can derive the formula for this internal resistance and why it's important that the load resistor which you connect to the measurement setup is not dimensioned too large. And after we discuss the theory we will go into the experiment where I show you step by step how you can measure the values which you need in a very quick and effective manner. And by the end of the video the terms open circuit voltage and short circuit current and also internal resistance will have have meaning for you and we, you will be able to use them in practice to assess the performance for example and the quality of a battery. My name is Andreas from the Philips Engineer and here we go. Now let's briefly talk about the motivation why it makes sense for you to watch this video. You might have heard that the internal resistance of a battery is a measure of its quality. If you have heard the expression internal resistance before, you might know that a low internal resistance is beneficial and a high internal resistance denotes a rather bad battery. And this measure of quality determines how strongly the terminal voltage of the battery drops if a load resistance is connected. And if this internal resistance is known to you, you can calculate, for example, whether your vehicle starter motor is going to work properly or whether it will fail in, on a cold winter day, for example, due to a lack of potential difference which is generated by your car battery. And measuring the internal resistance of the battery shows you what the meaning of this expression is, internal resistance, and also helps you understand how it can be determined in an experiment. And the approach consists of three basic steps. The first is um, the design of the appropriate measuring cir measurement circuit. The second is to set up the equations which we will need to solve for the internal resistance. And thirdly, we're going to carry out the actual ex experiment, not with a car battery, but with a 9 volt block battery, and then evaluate the measurement results. Now let's begin with step number one, the design of the measuring circuit. Now the challenges here are uh, is the fact that the internal resistance cannot be measured directly. If you uh, know how a multimeter, for example, works, such as this one here, um, if you can see it on the slide here, it's rather small, but it has various symbols and letters. For example, this one here is the, the omega, which denotes the measurement of resistance value. And if you have a resistor, you can use a multimeter set to a resistance measurement to determine the, the amount of resistance which this, which this resistor has. The problem with the internal resistance of a battery is that you cannot simply put the measuring leads of your of your multimeter to the terminals of the battery and then be done with it and um, just read off the internal resistance. That's not how it works. The internal resistance is a model resistance. It does not exist in reality. It's a model which consists of a perfect voltage source in series with this internal resistance and it models the behavior of the battery. And you cannot directly measure it. You can only compute it by using a number of a number of parameters which we need to determine in the experiment. So that's 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 what this setup here is for. Let's uh, briefly look at what's what's happening here. On the left, you have the battery. There, you can the you can see this internal model, the uh, the perfect voltage source with the open circuit um, voltage U O and the internal resistance R I. And um, this uh, this dashed line here denotes. The, the battery itself. So everything inside here models the behavior of a battery such as this one here. What we do is we connect um, to the terminals of the battery a load resistor named RL and uh, across the, the connectors of the load resistor we place a multimeter for measuring the voltage drop across this resistor here. And then in, in addition to this we also measure the current through the unbranched circuit here by, with, uh, with a second multimeter which we connect in series to the load resistance and to the terminals of the battery. Um, you might have also heard about this, this expression short circuit current. It um, basically denotes the amount of current that flows between the terminals of the battery if you place a short, uh, if, you, if you short them, if you place a very very good conductor directly across the two terminals and this should not be done in, in practice and experiments simply because it could overheat the battery, it could destroy your measuring equipment and uh, it also, depending on the type of battery, could be a safety hazard to yourself. So short circuit current measurements should not be conducted. And this setup here helps you get all the parameters you need in order to compute the internal resistance. What you can see here is step number two, which means setting up the equations to compute the internal resistance. And in order to do so, what we need to do is we need to apply the 
Kirchhoff's, uh, Kirchhoff's second rule, it's the loop rule. And as you can see here, we have set up a loop which um, incorporates the voltage drop of the perfect voltage source, the voltage drop across the internal resistor, and the voltage drop across the load resistor. And by respecting the reference counting arrows, we can set up this loop equation here simply by following this closed loop through the through the unbranched circuit. And this uh, loop already contains the internal resistance and this means we can solve for the internal resistance which has been done here and you can see that it's basically the difference between the open source uh, or the, the open terminal, the open source uh, voltage minus the load voltage divided by the load current. So these two come from the measurement using the multimeters we have seen on the previous slide. This one is one of the parameters of the, of the um, battery and based on this here you can compute the internal resistance. I need to issue a slight warning here because if the difference between these two values is too small then um, the, uh, the, um, the influence of measurement errors will increase significantly. Imagine you measure let's say 9 volt uh, open source voltage and uh, 8.95 volts load voltage drop. And this very small difference between the two will lead to a severe uh, distortion of the internal resistance. So what you should do is you should try to maximize the difference between the two voltages and maximizing the difference means that you have to, um, to create a very small voltage drop here across, across the load resistor. And this is something which you can do by placing a very small resistor there. So nothing, nothing in the area of kilo ohms, uh, better to take something in the area uh, somewhere around, let's say, 10 ohms or 20 ohms. It depends on the battery which you have. Um, I wouldn't recommend uh, placing a 20 ohm resistor across the terminals of a car battery simply because the current flow would be far too high. But let's say for a small household appliance, uh, ba a household battery, um, 10 ohms or even 5 ohms or even lower is still acceptable. And this maximizes the difference between these two and minimizes the influence of measurement errors. In this experiment I will show you how you can compute the internal resistance of this battery as well as the current that flows when we directly connect the two terminals to each other and we will look at the voltage which this battery provides when we connect a voltage measurement device directly to the terminals without attaching a load. These are the parameters which describe, which make up the battery and if we look at the um, at the um, voltage, which is printed here on the housing, this is indicated with 1.2 volts. This is the voltage which the battery should be able to provide over a large range of load resistors which are connected to it. We are not that much interested in the capacity. This is something which we have made another video about in the past. Now we are looking for the voltage and the current this battery can provide and also the internal resistance which limits the current flow which this battery can, uh, can provide and also the voltage drop for lower um, load resistances which we connect to it. Okay, so the, the experiment is basically divided into three phases. In the first phase, we will directly measure the voltage drop across this resistor here, which is at one ohm, and also the current flow through this resistor. And the cables you can see here, the red cables, the left and right, these are connected to the voltmeter, which is measuring the voltage drop, and the black cable as well as the other black cable which is attached to this housing here which is going to hold the battery they are connected in series to the current meter or the multimeter set of current measurement which you can see here on the on the right side the battery is going to be placed in this housing the positive terminal is connected to the positive lead here to the um, to the red lead which directly leads into the resistor then from the resistor it goes uh, it flows into the multimeter and from the multimeter, it flows back into the negative terminal of the battery. And as soon as we enter the battery into this housing, we can measure the current flow and the voltage drop for a one resistor. And based on these two measurements, we can already compute all the parameters which I have mentioned before. But we will conduct this experiment another time uh, using a 10 ohm resistor directly afterwards and also without any resistor in the final phase. And with each experiment, we can compute these values and at the, at the end we will compare if they are equal, if they are in the same ballpark or if there are any discrepancies. So let's start the experiment by entering the battery into this housing here 
And as you can see, there is a current flow to be measured, which is at 0.35 amps, as well as a voltage drop, which is at 0.35 volts. And these two measurements, they correspond very nicely to the one ohm resistor, which we have attached here. And basically that's it, that's the first experiment. We now have our value pair, and from this value pair, we can compute some of the parameters. Now let's um, disengage this resistor here and enter the 10 ohm resistor and put it in its place. And as soon as I connect the second crocodile clip, you can see another measurement on the display here, which now shows 0 0.989 volts and 0 0.099 amps. So roughly 100 milliamps and one volt, uh, which also correspond according to Ohm's law to the now 10 ohm resistor here. And in the last phase of the experiment, we will disconnect this entire setup here and measure the voltage drop across the terminals of the battery when no load is connected. So let's disengage this load resistor here. Let's um, disconnect the crocodile clips leading to the voltage meter and connect them directly to the housing of the battery. And in the display, what you can see now, let me just connect, let me connect this, uh, this here. What you can see now is the voltage drop across the battery, which is at 1.244 volts. This is a very important measurement, which we will use directly in the formulas after this experiment to compute the internal resistance. And lastly, the last measurement we're going to take is the um, current which flows when we connect one, of, one terminal of the battery directly through the, uh, to the other without any resistance in between apart from the resistance provided by the ampermeter which we need to measure the current flow. So in order to do this, let's directly connect the black clip to the negative to, to, the, to the negative terminal, the positive terminal in this case, and then the other one to the negative terminal. And as you can see now, once I connect them, um, is a current flow of 0 0.665 amps, which flows from one pole of one, from one terminal of the battery to the other. This is a measurement which you should not perform. Um, it's okay with this small battery for a short amount of time, but this will damage the accumulator, the battery over time, also with larger batteries, say nine volts, or even with a power supply, you should never do this because the current flow can be very, very high and can dis uh, destroy the battery, can damage your equipment, or even be um, a safety hazard to yourself. So with this small battery, it's okay for a short time, but you should not do this at home. And now we have all the measurements in place, which we need in order to um, compute these uh, parameters for the battery and now let's look at the values and compare the three experiments among each other. Now let's take a look at the evaluation results of this experiment here. Um, here you can see three equations. All three are suitable for computing the internal resistance using the measurements which we have taken. In the first one, uh, we are referring to the measurements using the one ohm resistor. And as you can see, this very small resistor leads to a very a large voltage difference between open circuit voltage and voltage drop across the load. And when, when we divide it by the current flow, we get an internal resistance of 2.58 ohms. Then for the second resistor, which was 10 ohms, you can see that the difference between the two voltages is now significantly smaller, but nonetheless, the difference is still large enough to get a result which is very similar to the first results. Uh, the first result, now it's 2.56 ohms, which is basically the same as in, as in the first case, but you can well imagine what would happen if we took, let's say, a 1K resistor here. The difference between these two values would become very, very small, and uh, this would severely distort the result of the internal resistance here. And the third one, which you can see at the bottom, is the open circuit voltage divided by the short circuit current. And as you can see, if you divide the two by each other, um, the resulting internal resistance is significantly below the values which we have computed here. And there's a reason for this. And the reason is that if you recall the current voltage characteristic curve of a battery, the open, uh, the, the short circuit current is the intersection of the, uh, of the straight line uh, with the y, uh, with the x-axis, which means um, the voltage drop is 
identical to zero, and for this um, for this um, for this state, the short circuit current flows. However, what we do in practice is we directly connect a measurement device with the open uh, with the with the terminals of the battery, and this measurement device has cables. Also, it has an internal resistance, and this means the short circuit is never across a perfect conductor with zero ohms, but it's always going to be um, a very small conductor, a very small resistance conductor, but nonetheless it has a resistance which is above zero. And this means we have a voltage drop across the load, it's not going to be zero, and this is the reason why a short circuit measurement um, is distorted into uh, the, 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 the lower end of the spectrum. It's always a little bit too small. It's beneath the actual, short, uh, the actual internal resistance, which you can see up here. So um, there are two reasons why you should not use the short circuit current to compute the internal resistance of a, of a battery. The first is it's dangerous depending on the size of the battery. The second one is it's not as accurate as, taking a, as, as using a, a normal resistor, which uh, has been done in the two experiments. One last comment here. What's interesting is that you do not necessarily need to know the resistance value. The resistance value, neither 1 ohm nor 10 ohm, um, it's not a part of any of the equations here. We are only using measurements based on voltage drop and also current flow, and the resistance value is rather a means of controlling the amount of voltage drop, and we do not need the exact size of the resistor anywhere in the equations. Just so you have heard it, um, you can take a small resistor, you don't need to measure the exact value, um, you can basically pick a one ohm resistor from your from the shelf, and you do not need to conduct an exact measurement on its size. Uh, it's sufficient to know that the difference of voltage drop between open circuit voltage and and load voltage is is large enough for this resistor to get an accurate result for the internal resistance here. Well, let's quickly summarize the major. Uh, takeaways from this video here. The first is the properties of a battery. They are characterized by open circuit voltage, by the short circuit current, and by the internal resistance. These three parameters describe the behavior of a battery. The second is the open circuit voltage is measured directly at the terminals of the battery in the case when no load is attached. So you simply connect your multimeter to the terminals and what you read off from it is the open circuit voltage. Then thirdly, the short circuit current is measured directly between the terminals of the battery and you need to uh, take caution here because if you directly connect the terminals of the battery, there's a danger of destroying the battery or even depending on the size of the battery, um, a safety hazard to yourself. So do not do this in, in practice. Then um, the fourth point is the internal resistance can be determined in two basic ways as we have seen. You can either measure current and voltage under a load directly or you can use the open circuit voltage and the short circuit current. If you have to measure the short circuit current, if it's not given to you, let's say, in an exam question, then you should always opt for the method in an actual experiment uh, where you use a, a load resistor and you measure current and voltage under this, under this load to get exact results. And lastly, if the internal resistance is determined by the short circuit current, as I said before, there is the risk of an inaccurate measurement result. So that's all for this video here. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me a comment down below. And that's all from me. I wish you a nice day. See you next time here on The Fearless Engineer.